And the depictions we've talked about so far are depictions of Macassan ships or European ships. Uh, do they depict any of their own coastal craft? Actually, this is probably the second question. What's the, what's the first question is, did the, did the Aborigines go to sea? <laughs> Tell us about that. They did. They, they, one of the very first depictions uh, which people are struggling to date accurately is of a canoe with a high prow. Um, up in the Kimberley, and some people are dating that to pre the famous um, the famous Wanjina pictures, which are four to five thousand years old, and they arrived around the time of the Dingo with the Aboriginal people. Some of these people are saying are much older than that, and they're indicating they may have been used to cross land bridges, but still a lot of uh, research to happen there. But the Aboriginal people certainly. Uh, were depicting their own uh, watercraft and um, a map that I've got um, or I've got obtained from one of the authors shows um, a raft ranging, you know, from bark canoes uh, to um, dugout canoes um, to simple outriggers, triple outriggers, uh, all sorts of things right across the eastern seaboard, right through the Murray-Darling, right around Tasmania, all the way across the um, northern area, Queensland, the Northern Territory, uh, some in the Pilbara, but none at all from uh, Sharks Bay um, down to Adelaide. So it, it's really quite, um, you know, a, quite an enormous spread. And these are of their own watercraft. I just want to pick you up on something because you mentioned the arrival of the dingo, which is an interesting maritime story in itself, isn't it? Can you tell us about that? Well, the, there's. Um, yeah, I'm out of my tree, obviously, even though know, I love dogs. Um, dingoes. That I remember travelling through India, um, and in various parts of India, I sat down. There were these dogs there, and I'm, I sat down and looked at them, and I thought they're dingoes. And this was only a few years ago. I attended a conference in Delhi, and I thought, my God. And this is before I'd actually read about this, but the dingo is reputed to have come across with Aboriginal people or some some of the Aboriginal people four to 5,000 years ago. Now, obviously, it's, uh, Aboriginal occupations of Australia are going back 50, 60,000 years, but the dingo itself comes in about that time. And interestingly, this is a similar period of the famous Wanjina, the uh, people from the Kimberley. So you have different groups of Aboriginal uh, dating of Aboriginal folk, and then you have the dating of the introduction of the dingo. Um, so they, those dingoes have come across from Southeast Asia, it appears, and obviously they've had to come in vessels, you know, um, you could, or, or, well, walk a land bridge, but I think there was, there was never a straight land bridge. There was a gap. Absolutely. And that brings us back to this question of the Aboriginal people's uh, seagoing craft. And we've talked about this um, canoe with a high prow. What else do we know about the ancient Aboriginal seagoing craft? Well, the, the um, various explorers talk about uh, the layered raft. It's actually called in some circles a Bardi raft, which is, uh, say, about five logs of timber on top of five logs of timber and it's nailed together because my one of my books is about ships fastenings and I refer to the Aboriginal watercraft as being one of the very first vessels ever made and they held these things together with um, tree nails which are made of timber and there's many examples of them they're quite beautiful and uh, Dampy describes some in, in various places but um, they, they are seen by explorers, early European explorers, in the Kimberley region. And even though Dampier was uh, up in the Kimberley himself, he doesn't describe one of these Bardi rafts or the Aboriginal rafts. So he had rafts made of logs um, held together with tree nails uh, and, of course, with, uh, with any form of uh, root and things like that. You had the, the canoes made of bark, which are taken from a tree. You had uh, canoes 
and and rafts that are bound together with twine, which the French explorers saw down in Tasmania. Oh, were they the kind of bundles of the bundles of sticks together, all bound up? That's there, right. There, like there's a, a depiction. Raft. Yep. Yeah, the bundle raft. There's a there's a there is one rock art depiction of that that I've certainly seen. Yes. Oh, you will have seen a lot. And mm. and so they've they've got their own. And so they're seafaring in the extent that they are certainly. Um, going across estuaries, you've got the most glorious picture of a man called Samson, Jangalili, in the Kimberley. Uh, he is standing on one of these Bardi rafts, double-layered rafts, and he's using his body as a sail, I think. If he wants to go faster, he stands up with his back to the wind. Slower, wow. he goes side on, even slower, sitting down. And there's another magnificent image of um, two women... Uh, on one of the rafts with dingo pups. In this is in the Kimberley region. So they didn't have the seafaring um, boats that we know of, but they used the massive tides to go miles and miles to islands. I mean, some of our archaeologists are finding occupations on islands 10, 15 miles offshore in the Kimberley. And Kimberley is magnificent to go to, but very difficult and dangerous. And they were going back and forward. Have they got kind of seven metre tides or something? I mean, tides that oh, can... Oh, seven metre tides and enormous tidal races. And, you know, yeah. so they, they, were, they were clever people. And I've actually got a quote here from one bloke. Um, and I've actually gone and lost his name. So it's... Um, well, not, not having, haven't lost his name, but oh, yes, here we go. Um, one European, the celebrated Northern Territorian, Bill Harney, regarded Aboriginal nautical abilities highly, considering them good seamen, and for years of hunting had given them the, the feel of the ocean. And in the late 1930s, this particular author, I think it's, it's uh, Roberts is his name, he quotes a man called Charles Barrett, was amazed to see five young boys arrive in Darwin in a dugout canoe, having travelled 400 miles along the coast. These wow. Argonauts of the Arafura Sea, he remarked, make canoe voyages that Richard Highclute would have loved to have chronicled. You know about the Highclute chronicles? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is just, a, it was a glorious statement um, I felt in this one. Um, and um, and uh, another man who, um, who spent four years uh, trepanging or beshtemir in Western Arnhem Land was so accustomed to seeing Aboriginal crewmen that he said that the appearance of a lugger without blackfellows uh, was worthy of note. And so this is this is quite uh, extraordinary quotes that researchers are picking up from people. So they certainly were great sailors. They certainly. Um, were seen on board the ships. Uh, and in another one, you know, it's the I told you that the Aboriginal people left sometimes willingly with the Macassans to go back to Macassar, sometimes unwillingly. Some were found in the slave markets. And apparently a recent DNA research is showing uh, that there's uh, um, they're certainly mixed with the Macassan people over the years. So the interactions are enormous and their presence on boats, uh, larger boats as the Macassans and Europeans came in Bestemir and Perling, is, is, is ongoing. So they certainly were very good mariners. Mm -hmm.